So now that we talked about all the different shapes you can make, let's talk about stringing this deformer along and creating all sorts of new shapes, both simple and complex. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back down to primitive type one, and then we can scale this down and you're gonna see, we still have this set to this purple one, this crone here is set to new service. If we change that back down to zero, now we're in project mode. So now we're gonna be projecting, if we turn on polyframe again, or projecting this primitive out. Now, if I want to, I can actually project this primitive so far that the original bounding box is overtaking, is being overtaken by our new primitive. So if I change this here to primitive type two, and then change this outside axis to zero, I can make it this a cylinder, and then I can change the axis so that cylinder's pointing straight up, and I have a completely new primitive. So if you wanna just swap out the underlying shapes with a brand new primitive, you can do that. Now, if you're happy with this result, and this is where you wanna start, there's a couple different ways you can handle this. The easiest way is this white cone over here is accept. If I touch that, it's gonna go ahead and say, accept that. That's the exact same thing as going in here and choosing accept as this button right here. Now, we've already talked about full reset. That resets this all the way back down to the original. So for example, I've reset this, but if I pull up, you're gonna see we're projecting that exact same shape we have out of this object. So if we scale this down and then pull this up, we're now getting a brand new shape. If we turn off polyframe, you're gonna see we're kind of getting a complex cylinder shape. And of course, if we go to the side here, as we pass this bounding box middle past that um, point here, you're gonna see now we're cutting in and we can continue to scale this as needed. And of course, even change the shape. So if I want to, I can start changing this shape here to kind of round off. So now we're getting a circle cut in the middle of here. And if you wanna see this entire shape, always feel free to go back over here to new surface and change that back to one. And now you can see, oh yeah, I'm taking a sphere out of there. And then you can always turn it back down to zero. Then that'll go ahead and cut through. Now, if you turn on polyframe, you're gonna notice we're kinda of getting some tessellation issues in here. If we go ahead and make this back to a cylinder, you can see it's kinda of getting ugly in there. So one thing you can do is you can go over here. Let's make it so you can see it here. This is uh, this green one right here is tessellate. It's set to 0.463 by default, apparently. Uh, you can drag this up and that'll continue to tessellate these edges here. It's not gonna do much for the bottom area, unfortunately, but it will go ahead and make these outside corners pretty nice. So it'll add more geometry where these, where these shapes are intersecting. So for now, let's go ahead and change this back down to a sphere here. Or if you wanna make this even faster and you know the original primitive is a sphere, you can go to this gear right here and say full reset. That'll go ahead and reset this to a sphere. So now you can take this sphere and go ahead and scale it out. And now you have a nice sphere in here. And of course you can change this primitive as well. You can just drag this modifier. You can go from a cube all the way to a diamond here. And when you did a full reset, this blend got set back to 0.29. So let's set that back to zero, set this primitive type back to two, and then take this inside modifier or take this outside modifier, set it to zero, and then change that axis back this blue one here, so we're cutting through. And now, because that blend is set to zero, we're getting a much nicer transition on that bottom side. It was that blend that was causing that bottom issue. So now if we take this tessellate and increase that tessellation, you're gonna see we are getting nicer tessellation on that inside. Now, of course, you can cut through an object like this, and it's gonna allow you to cut through until you hit the middle of the object. If we switch back to new, new surface and set that to one, you're gonna see this is the object. So once we pass that midpoint, it's gonna to wanna to switch back over into an addi additive mesh. So what we can do is scale this non-uniformly so we can punch in a deeper surface in here. So if we go back and change this back to a project again, now we're able to push in much further than we were previously because that midpoint hasn't been breached yet. So now when we go here, now it's gonna project back up. And of course, we're not getting very good results on that tessellation, so we may have to increase that tessellation as needed. And I guess worst case scenario, if you can't get that tessellation to look the way you want, what you can do is you can drop it down a little further and see if you can't fine tune it. But you can also change this from project to new surface. And even though these are technically two separate objects, if we go in here and we tap the accept, and then we go in here and we say, remesh by union. That'll go ahead and stick both of those objects together. We can hit W, we can go back in here to project primitive. And now we're right back where we started with this primitive here. And we'll go ahead and say this is project. And now we can start cutting through. And now you can, of course change this blend to zero and start cutting in more and more complex shapes. 
Now, another way to accept, other than hitting this accept cone, is you can just hit W and that'll take you out of gizmo mode. And then if you do anything else, like if you go into draw mode and you use your move brush or anything and you hit W to go back in, you're gonna see we still have this deformer available to us. It's orange. So you can go back in here and you can choose project primitive and now you have your project primitive settings available to you so you can still move this primitive up and down but as soon as you do that it gets rid of that additional deformation you did after the gizmo was available so if you use w and then move or rotate this thing around and then go back into the gear and then go back into project primitive it's still going to update on the fly although you may have to deal with it the fact that this gizmo is now a little bit off center let's go ahead and undo that and go back to our original orientation and like I said before, another thing you do is you just go in here and you say accept, and that'll go ahead and accept it. This is no longer orange, so now you can go through here, put in another project primitive, and then when we push down, you're going to see we still have our cylinder selected. If you want to start back over with the original sphere, you can do a full reset. Make sure you take your blend back down to zero if you want, and now you have a sphere modifier in here as well.